Добрый вечер, да? Good evening. Сегодня я первый раз проповедую полную проповедь. Для меня это особенно... Today I'm going to preach the full sermon, and it, it's a great honor for me. It was a long pass for me, and it's not a simple thing for me to stand in front of you. For me to be able to preach before you is the very serious and very difficult path of faith. And maybe it took about 20 years, for 10 years for sure. But nevertheless, I'm really happy to stand before you. And I'm glad that God is able to use me to preach his word. And I would like to start our sermon with the question. Are you grateful to God? Are you grateful to him for your life or for some person in your life? Who is, who is grateful? <laughs> I see just few hands. Not many people <laughs> express their gratitude. Then I'll ask another question. If you are thankful, do you thank him? And if you express your gratitude to God, how often do you say, thank you, Lord? Thank you for everything I have. Often? All the time, people say. Did anybody say thank you to the Lord today? So I don't see, I don't see many questions, uh, many responses. Can I give you a big answer? Sometimes I can express gratitude to the Lord in my prayer. And sometimes I, I'm so used to, to things and I, th I take so many things for granted that it becomes like something habitual. I do not receive all his blessings as a gift. As you understand, today I would like to talk about gratitude or thanksgiving. Let us read 1 Corinthians 1. 1 Corinthians 1. Verse 4. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. So Paul says that he continually, that he always thanks God. He prays for them. He prays for their wisdom. He prays God to bless them and provide them spiritual gifts. No, he doesn't say that I'm praying for you to have all these things. No, he says I'm praying. I'm praising God for you. I'm thanking God for you. So Paul here underlines how important it is to be thankful for somebody. We often miss this point. We often come to God with our needs. We pray for about somebody. We pray about our own needs and somebody else's needs. We pray about specific people whom God puts on our heart. And we pray and pray about this person, about these problems. Nevertheless, we, we do not express our gratitude. There are so many topics we can talk to God about. But here we see Paul says, I thank my God always for, on your behalf for the grace of God. For the grace of God that God can give you or he 
I want him to give you. I do not ask God to give you something, but I, I thank him for doing that, for giving this to you. It's Paul. It's Paul. He was a very spiritual man. He was a charged, spiritual charged man. He was ready to work because everything was good with him. It was easy for him to be thankful. But don't think that Paul had difficult. Uh, it like, seems like he had the opportunity never to forget about God's grace to him, God's gifts to him and blessings to him. No, it's not that way. Let's see real life of Apostle Paul. Second Corinthians. Можно, пожалуйста, еще раз место. First Corinthians 2, 3. Second Corinthians 2, 3. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. I don't think it's a condition that helps you to be grateful. Everything that, God, uh, everything that Paul went through, wherever he was, whatever people he addressed, Paul didn't have easy life, an easy life. He always was persecuted. He was, uh, he was working hard. He experienced cold and thirst and hunger. His life was not an easy one. But yet, Paul never forgot about gratitude. Yes, it's, it's good to pray to God and say, Lord, please give me strength and courage and uh, wisdom. Nevertheless, Paul prays. Paul uh, speaks about absolutely different things. Despite of the circumstances, Paul was grateful. And Paul writes to the Corinthians, I thank God for you. So you might think it was easy for him to be grateful for these people because they were so spiritual, they didn't cause any problems, they didn't uh, sin, they were obedient, they, it was an ideal church in Corinth. And that's why Paul could say, oh, it's so, de it's e it's so easy for me to be thankful for you. No, it was not that way. Let's see, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 through 3. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babies in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able, for you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? The church in Corinth suffered from many, from many sins and from much misunderstanding and mistakes, as any church can. And who could, could think, okay, what, what can I be grateful for? I brought back the word of God to them. I taught them. I, and they listened to me and turned away from what I taught them. So I have to pray for them because they do not understand. They don't realize their problems. I will pray for them. Paul, nevertheless, looks at them not from the point of view what their mistake was, but what good they were doing. I thank God for you always, not just interceding for them, like praying for them, but to... He didn't say that I will pray God to give you understanding. No, he says, I, I am praising God, I am thanking God for you.
So Paul views gratitude as the strongest weapon he has. Despite the imperfections of the church, Paul praises God or thanks God for it, for this church. Why? Why does Paul thank God? First Corinthians, First Corinthians 1, 5, 7. First Corinthians 1, 5, 7. That in everything you are enriched by Him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the com coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul knew that when he expresses his gratitude, it's not just words. Oh, thank you, God, that you gave me this opportunity to, to serve here, or you gave me these people to whom I could preach. It was not, thank you, Lord, that they are so good or so and not so bad. The gratitude has the power no, no less than the prayer of intercession. The prayer of gratitude has strength, has strength. And when we pray about the people, we should be grateful for them. Paul, Paul says, I praise God, I pray, I, mean, I thank God for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. Paul says, I, I will thank God for you and God will provide more for you. So where did Paul get this habit of gratitude, of expressing gratitude? Where, how did he develop this habit? In order to know this, we have to look at Paul's life. First of all, we know that Paul was was a persecutor of the church. He was a Jew who, grew, who was raised, who grew up uh, uh, at the feet of Gamaliel, uh, the Jewish teacher. He was raised in Jewish uh, tradition and he was very uh, strict. He held the law very strictly. And he became the persecutor of the church and on the way to Damascus the Lord touched him and Paul was saved and he began to know God and for a long time he he was studying and then God calls him to bring the good news to the Gentiles so is there a reason for Paul to be grateful? I think it would, it would be more comfortable for Paul to stay in Jerusalem, uh, in their local church, and, from, and there he could teach people and encourage people because they had lots of people there with needs and who, could, who, needed, the, the, who needed salvation and the there was a lot of ministry, ministries there. But here we see that God called Paul to go not to, to, to the Jews in other places, but to the Gentiles to overcome the big distances and go through persecutions and uh, suffering and discomfort. So why? Why did Paul was thank? Why did Paul uh, thank God? Why was he grateful to him? First Timothy, what? 
Could you please repeat the reference? Первая Тимофея глава какая? First Timothy one. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is in our, is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord, as I besought thee to abide still at Eleven seventeen. Okay. Eleven seventeen. According. According to the glorious gospel of the of blessed God, which was committed by my trust, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me for the for that He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. So we see that God, that Paul had expresses here that he was able what he was able to wait uh, God for, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. So he was thanking him for all these things. Yes, it would be much more comfortable for them to st for him to stay in the local church. But he was thankful that the Lord sends him to the uh, Gentiles. Yes, there won't be comfort there, but he is thankful to the Lord even being in those circumstances and he was very he was thankful for the people he met for the church in Corinth as we read he was thankful he had this habit of thanking God and it did not depend on circumstances. He did, Paul didn't require good life and comfortable situation in order to be grateful to God. He thanked him in all circumstances because he knew that the gratitude to God, the words of thanksgiving has have strength, strength and he wants us to use it. Verse 15, he says, 1 Timothy 1, 15, this is a faithful thing and worthy of all exception that, Jesus, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. He, um, so another, another reason for Paul to be grateful to God was that he knew who he was. He knew that he was a sinner. He knew what God did for him. And he was very sincere in his gratitude that God gave him what, for what God gave him. And that's why gratitude was living in him. He didn't have to force himself to be grateful. He never forgot about gratitude because he always remembered what God did for him. Paul, 
Paul was not uh, an. Mm -hmm. Paul didn't express his gratitude from time to time. Today, I'm thankful tomorrow I forget about it. He always thanked God. And we see that in his actions, in his words. And in Ephesians chapter 1, 15, 1, 15, 18. 1, 15, 20. Ephesians 1. Uh, wherefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers see again he always thanks God for you and the same principle Paul expresses his gratitude for somebody he remembers every time he remembers about the church in Ephesus he thanks God why because as we read thankfulness has the strengths is the strength or the powers through which God pours, uh, pours down his blessings. And Paul does it over and over again. Every time he remembers about people from this church, they, he thanks God for them. Gratitude was uh, the part of Paul's life. Was a part of, of, God, of Paul's life. Seventeen, we said that the God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of Him. So, in the verse seventeen, we also see how this gratitude influences a person with the blessings. Philippi Philippians chapter one, two four, one, two four. Grace be unto you and peace. Chapter 1. Philippians 1, 2, 3, 4. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making request with joy. We again see, Paul says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, and he does it with joy. That's a very important thing. We come to God and we say, Lord, we have to pray about somebody, and we can... We come as the person with constant request give me, give me, give me, give me but you, you don't have to ask him all the time but he thanks for what he does so, what, so our prayer should be complete not only requests but also gratitude and praise uh, and we can say that mm, yeah, I have to thank God but our heart does feel that gratitude we are overwhelmed with the problem. That's why we say, thank you, God, for this and this. And you don't have any joy, and you just, your thoughts heading the wrong, I mean, the other direction. But Paul says, I'm, I'm, I thank God with joy. I do not concentrate on the problem. I thank God with joy. Yes, there is a problem. I know there is a problem that everything is imperfect and the church is imperfect. And the people to whom I, I preach, they are, they are not perfect. But I'm not looking at them. I'm looking at God and I express my gratitude with joy to my God for, all, for the fruit that God both grows in them, that God produces in them. And that's why with joy I express my gratitude, because I know that there is power in it. When I look at this need, at this difficulty, I cannot be sincere in my gratitude because I, I'm concentrated on the wrong thing. It's uh, on the problem, not on God. 
I don't want to look at a guy who, who is able to solve any problem. I don't want to look at the problem. I want to be concentrated on the one who is able to resolve this problem. And Paul prayed and expressed his gratitude always. We often to come to God. Oh, God knows my heart. He knows that I'm grateful. And we do not care about expressing our gratitude in words. You know, oh, we think oh, God knows that I'm grateful. I, mean, I will better bring the needs to God. God. God knows my heart. God loves me. He sees how grateful I am. And I no need for me to express my gratitude. That's passive gratitude. What is the difference between passive and active gratitude? Active gratitude is the, is the purposeful gratitude in, expressed in words. Thank you very much, God, for everything you do. Paul expressed his gratitude in words, and he used active gratitude, not passive, because it's a purposeful gratitude. Sometimes we are puzzled. What can I thank God for? Everything is so bad. Everything is so horrible. And we, and we began to tell God, so what, what, what can I thank God for? And this would be like forceful gratefulness. Oh God, I feel so bad, but yet thank you. I, I, I feel horrible, but thank you. That's not a very effective, effective gratitude because it doesn't come from it's just uh, it's not sincere expression of gratitude it's just some, some emotions as we saw earlier in Paul's letters the, in Paul's letters the gratitude should be with joy and it should be addressed to God it can be used as a weapon in this world people express gratitude to each other and this worldly gratitude is not the gratitude we have to apply uh, to God because worldly gratitude is when you feel good and somebody did something really nice to you or gave you a gift or something nice happened in your life and you say oh thank you thank you thank you thank you for what I have and if I didn't have get it I didn't have it I don't have it mm, so no reason to be thankful that's a worldly thanksgiving and in this world people are grateful only if they get something and this something is good but if he receives something not what he expected it would be like th mm, thank you ah, thank you not very much and that's why our gratitude should be the way uh, Paul shows it, not the way. The good example of such gratitude when we accept from God everything. We accept our life the way it is, with all the difficulties and pluses and minuses and difficulties and joys and disappointments and, and ups and downs we can see in the life of Job. Let's see the book of Job chapter 1, 121. And said 
Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And uh, also chapter 2. 9 and 10. Then said his wife unto him, Does you st uh, do you still retain your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, You speak as one of the foolish women speak. What shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this, did not Job sin with his lips? We know that Job has exper had experience. I mean, okay. By then, by that time, Job had experienced much trouble in his life. He lost all his possessions, his children. He he lost his health, and he was uh, covered with leprosy. Do you think it was difficult? I mean, it was easy for Job to thank God. In, this, in his situation, nevertheless, he, he continued to glorify God. It's not worldly gratitude. I don't think that anybody who would receive some quote-unquote gift would be thankful to God or would be able to glorify God for it. Nevertheless, Job continued to be faithful to God and glorify Him. And this gratitude he was able to express even in his words. And that's the, that's the, the thankful, thankfulness of the thing and gratitude that we can see in the life of Paul. And <coughs> The gratitude that does not depend on circumstances, doesn't depend on perfection of surrounding. surroundings. If you want to learn to, to be thankful to God, I think it's a very good thing. But how can we learn to do that? How can we develop such habit? of being thankful. There are many examples, but I would like to take one of the most banal ones, that would, the one that it, people usually use a lot, King David. Psalm 136. Thirty-five. 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 Thirty-five.
Everything is very simple. You just have to want to glorify God, to thank God. He provides millions of reasons every day to be thankful for. Let's see what effect the gratitude has in our life. First of all, gratitude glorifies God. When we express our gratitude, we glorify His name. When we thank God, we can see positive and joyful aspects of our lives, not only problems. Gratitude, gratefulness for somebody. When God put a specific person in your heart to pray for, for this person, to praise God for the pastor, you don't know his his need, what maybe problems he's facing, but the thanksgiving for the pastor. Even when you don't know the need and you just express your gratitude for him, God blesses him and he meets his needs. If you don't even know the needs of the person, you can just continue to thank God for that person. And God, through your gratitude, will bless him. There is there are lots of effects of this gratitude in our life. You just have to use it. We can be displeased with our lives. There are some good and not very good moments in it. And if when something difficult, I mean, some complicated things happen in our life, it's difficult for, for us to concentrate on the blessings of God that we have already. And we cannot forget to express gratitude. We just come to God and we complain. We complain about how badly everything, how bad is everything. But Paul says that despite of all the circumstances, you still can be thankful to God. If everything was fine in our life, then this need of uh, being grateful would disappear. We would not need to express it because once would be enough. Thank you, God, that everything is fine. We express our gratitude and everything continues to be fine. But if there are different things, different trials, different problems in our life, and God again and again and again and again shows His love, His care, we, we have this reason to be thankful again and again and express our gratitude to Him. And, and this great gratitude is the, the weapon that we can use over and over again in our life, despite the fact that not everything is so easy in our lives. So let us remember about how uh, impo about importance of gratitude. These words that I was talking about, this sermon, was addressed kind of to believers, so they would think about reasons to be grateful to God. But gratefulness also that can be addressed to the unbelievers because unbelievers find it very difficult to be thankful to God because where we see God's light they see only problems only their own problems and imperfections of this world 
wars and losses and uh, sickness. And they ask, how and why can you be thanking God? I don't want to thank God for such world because there are so many problems and horrific things in this world. Is there anything to be thankful for? I, there is. There is something to be thankful for. Just because he is a creator or he created this world. Some time ago I was talking sharing the good news with the person who had very, very difficult time. He experienced the horrific things in his life and losses. And when I shared the gospel with him, every time I, uh, I saw this, and I heard these words over and over from him, how can you say that God loves me? If my life, I have experienced this, 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 and this, these horrific things in my life, and God loves me. But praise the Lord that the, the person received this, the Lord, and he, he, be, he was able to see that despite of all that evil that took place in his life, the Lord was there and he was blessing him. But gratitude for God I and mean, to God reopens the eyes uh, uh, of the world and shows us the way he was. He is. Paul was the persecutor of the church. And when he was heading to Damascus, he was not a believer. And when he met Christ and he, he saw this light and heard the voice who said, uh, Paul, Paul, it's difficult to, for you to go against. And he said, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus whom you persecute. This light began to shine for the Jew, for a Jew who already knew God, because he was sure he knew God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When he heard, when he heard the name of Jesus, and when Jesus began to talk to him, he realized that it was Jesus. Paul was praying to God, but now this God became a person for him. So Jews and non-Jews can come to God. Those who think that they know God and those who don't know him. We all can come to God and thank Him for our life, to thank Him for this world. Gratitude is for all. For all. Everybody can use it. The most important thing is to realize how important it is, how significant gratitude is. Let's pray.